Hey gang, Jim Bowers here. I'm out here camping in Bodega Bay, California. You know that, that movie, The Birds, with uh, Alfred Hitchcock that was filmed here. You know, where he attacks that lady and pecks her face here. But anyway, uh, this is my campsite and my 1979 Corsair motorhome. And uh, there's my two Phantoms. I've got the Phantom Vision Plus and the uh, P1, the Phantom 1.1. So we're gonna be shooting some video out here and uh, I'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to fly your Vision Plus and your Phantom 1. If you're trying to decide what kind of a Phantom you wanna get, either the Phantom 1, the Phantom 2, the Phantom 2 Vision, or the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, there's a lot to decide there and you kind of have to weigh all of your options. It depends on what you want to do with your Phantom. If what you're really into is high-end videography, like if you want to take pictures of real estate or landscapes or beautiful vistas, then consider getting the Phantom Vision or the Vision Plus. This is the Phantom Vision Plus. It's got a 1080p video camera on it and a 1440 still pictures uh, capability. This is a Phantom 1.1.1. If you're looking at flying just FPV, low and fast, consider getting, and this will also save you a lot of money, where this is about 1400 bucks, this one is only 479 I believe you can get it for online, and that's for a bare bones Phantom 1.1. What I did with this one was, I just put a vibration dampener on it, and I made my own little L bracket out of Lexan, mounted that to it, then I bought the Pilot Cam from Hobby King, and it comes uh, with an SD card slot in it, so you can still record video, but with an ultra lightweight camera. So I use this Phantom for flying low and fast and through obstacles and it gets me the maximum amount of flight time on a standard three cell battery, but it's because I don't have all this weight like a GoPro and a gimbal and all that sort of thing on it. So Phantom 1.1 with just a real lightweight flight cam will give you a maximum flight time for flying low and fast. Here's a little quadcopter for you. If you're thinking about just getting into the hobby and you want to practice your flying skills before you invest, you know, 1200 bucks on a Phantom, then you might want to pick up one of these little Latrax. <laughs> There's Keith over there, showing off his flying skills. You got it. I feel it. Take out a seagull. Yeah. <laughs> Saw that coming. <laughs> if you're not familiar with what pitch, roll, and yaw stands for, here's how it works. This is the pitch. It's forward and backwards, or up and down. This is the roll. Left and right roll. And this is the yaw and that's side to side movement. Here's a quick tip for you that I've just found out from one of my YouTube viewers. You wanna be very careful with that ribbon that's back here on the back side of your camera. That ribbon is flexible and it's the power for the camera and the uh, information cable. So that ribbon, you have to be very, very gentle with. So there's been uh, reports out there that people are breaking this ribbon and mainly because they're not careful enough when they put this uh, protective shroud on. They're sliding it on and goofing it around and hitting that ribbon. So be very careful when you're removing this protective shroud. Watch that ribbon and put the shroud on very carefully, take it off very carefully. Okay, so, all right. This remove before flight tag, I've, I've been able to pick a whole bunch of them up. So if you'd like to order one, send me an email to jimbowers at foothill.net 
and they're 10 bucks, I'll send you a PayPal request and send you one in the mail. It never hurts to put your phone number and the word reward on your Phantom. You know, some people will say they don't want to put their phone number on their Phantom because they don't want to plow into a crowd of people and then have them, you know, find you because your phone number is on it. Well, take responsibility for your damn bird. Put your phone number on it, put your name on it or reward or whatever, and the chances of you getting it back should you have a flyaway or lose orientation and you lose it somehow, the chances of you getting it back are going to go way up because somebody just might call you and tell you they found it. You can give them 50 bucks for returning your $1,500 Phantom. Hey, just another quick tip for you. If you do get sand or dirt into your props, you know, if you do a header and, and just flip your Phantom over upside down into the dirt, you're going to get sand inside of those motors. It's not the end of the world. You'll notice that it'll start eh, scraping on you and it doesn't want to turn because you're all bound up with dirt or sand or pebbles or whatever inside the motor. It's not the end of the world. You can clean it out. And I wouldn't use an air hose or anything because I just don't know that you wouldn't drive the sand down in there deeper. The best way, the easiest way to get sand or anything out of your, uh, your, uh, your motors is just like this. So let me show you. And there you go, just kind of give it a wiggle back and forth and just keep wiggling until all the sand and dirt drops back out of your motor. You'll know that it's uh, clean when you can free spin the prop and there's absolutely no uh, grinding or, or it hanging up on you. It has to be completely free spinning because if there's a grain of sand in there and it catches while you're flying, the thing is just going to immediately flip to the ground. So uh, make sure you get all the dirt out of there if you do get mound up. Okay. When you're installing your props, there's an easy way to figure out how to do it. Look at your props and on the face of it, it's got the little diagram that tells you which direction the prop spins. Look at the prop and the prop, you can tell that this prop needs to spin in that direction in order to get lift. So install this prop or any one of them first, but just look at the diagram and figure it out, install this prop. Then the prop directly across from it is going to be the same color. And that means the other two are gonna have to be silver or the opposing color. So just install one of your props straight across install the other black one then put your two silver props on and you're ready to go if it's one thing i cannot stand it's when people post pictures of their food on facebook like that the wind is blowing about 15 miles an hour and for flying a phantom you want to be very careful when the wind gets up around that type of speed because if the wind starts gusting and it gets up around 20 miles an hour, your Phantom is going to be backing up in the air. In other words, you're gonna be full throttle trying to get it to go forward, but it's actually going to be backing up. So 15 miles an hour is about the maximum that you wanna be trying to fly your Phantom. And then you wanna watch for gusty wind. You know, it's one thing if the wind is steady at 12 miles an hour, you'll be okay, you can fly your Phantom, no big deal. But when it starts getting up around 15, 18 miles an hour and gusty, you wanna be very, very careful. I'm gonna show you a few samples, what it looks like to fly the Vision Plus in a really strong wind. Watch how rock solid stable it is. Even though the Phantom is just rocking around and pitching everywhere, the picture is just dead on solid, perfect stable.
it is freaking cold here. And uh, another quick tip, if it's cold where you are, keep your batteries in your pocket. Just stick them in your coat pocket close to your body and try to get them a little warm. Because if you fly with a really cold battery, your 10 minute flight is gonna turn into a three minute flight. Cold batteries do not do well in cold weather. So try to keep your batteries warm. One way to do it is on the way to your flying site, put your batteries on the floorboard of your car and turn on the heater and try to warm up your batteries with your car heater. So you notice I'm just now starting up my uh, Vision Plus. Turn on the radio, turn on the Wi-Fi extender, power up the Phantom itself, and now I'm waiting for my video signal to lock in on my uh, DJI app. And I'm not exactly sure in what order you're supposed to uh, start everything up. So I'm kind of playing with that and uh, getting the best uh, you know, sequence that you're supposed to start everything. A couple of things you can try to uh, fix that. One is go in here to your uh, iPhone app, go back on the top left corner, go back to the main screen and then trip camera again. And that might free up your video image. You can tell you've got a live image just by pitching your camera up or down to see that your camera is working correctly, okay? If that doesn't solve it, then what you might have to do is what I've done a couple of times here, and that's turn off your iPhone completely. Because it seems to have something to do with the app itself. It's the app that's causing the problem. It's not the Vision Quadcopter. This is the compass on your Phantom. It's down here on the leg. That compass needs to be calibrated, you know, maybe once every two weeks or whenever you move more than, let's say, 30 miles from the last place that you calibrated it. One thing you always want to be careful with is keep this away from anything magnetic. So if you've got it in your car, keep it away from the radio speakers. Keep it away from things like manhole covers, or anything on the ground that may have magnetic properties. Protect your compass. Say, it's a great day. It's a great day. To be alive. To be alive. There you go. Okay, say it all together. All together. <laughs> hey gang, Jim Bowers here. Hey, I just wanted to introduce you to my friends, Kate and Chris. And uh, we're out here at Bodega Bay and uh, just taught Chris how to fly the Phantom. And uh, he did a terrific job with it. And I just want to let you know that it's not that difficult to fly the Phantom for the first time. What was your experience? Uh, once you learn the sensitivities of the machine and the controls, uh, it's pretty easy actually. And w was there anything that you found difficult about trying to fly it for the first time? Uh, no, other than the sensitivities, learning, uh, I, I found that turning left and right, if you're not careful, you'll turn far more than you think you sh are turning, so you have to be very gentle with that control, but otherwise it was easy. Yeah, so there you go. Um, just be careful on your sticks and don't over control the aircraft <laughs> because you can easily do that. When you're turning and, and uh, rotating the Phantom on its, on its axis, one thing that uh, beginners especially tend to do is they tend to flick the stick. You know, they, they, they pop it. And you don't want to do that. You just want to give it a gentle one millimeter, two millimeter push. It's just a very, very minute amount of pressure on the stick. Practice that and then you won't over control and, you know, get out of control with your aircraft. Just give it very, very, very slight movements, especially in the beginning, okay? So here we've got the vision up in the air. You notice that the green LED lights are back toward me. And that's the way you wanna orient yourself to the Phantom. Keep those green LED lights on your side. Don't start rotating your Phantom around and getting all turned around. If you do, you're just gonna become disoriented. 
it's not a good idea either to start messing with your throttle. Don't go up and down, don't start doing all of that kind of stuff because you're just gonna get yourself into trouble. So just get about 15 feet off the ground and leave it there. You wanna go out and then back toward you and then bank right and bank left. And just practice those moves, always keeping the green LEDs toward you. And if there's any pros and cons, the con is that it's difficult to see an iPhone screen when you're out in sunlight. So that's kind of why I've always liked flying with goggles because you're just in there and totally immersed. But you know, flying with an iPhone has its advantages too because you're flying a line of sight. And of course, I'm not flying with my goggles today because the FAA won't let me do that anymore. So I'm wearing it just to look cool. Hey, that's gonna do it for another lengthy edition of Demon Seed here on YouTube, gang. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to order the Remove Before Flight tag for your uh, shroud on your Vision Plus or our fancy schmancy landing gear skids, just shoot me an email to jimbowers at foothill.net. Don't forget to leave a comment, like my videos, and I get back with everybody. All right, we'll see you later.